Good morning. Now, repeated uh, surgery on the external genitalia results in scarring, compromised vascularity, um, tissue hypoxia, which results in suboptimal healing. Consequently, the surgical com high complication rate for the surgery, regardless whether it's one stage, two stages, three stages, and regardless of the degree of the surgical uh, skill. So in May of uh, 2014, we set out to uh, reduce the high complication rate. So Alan Katz and I uh, started a trimodal uh, protocol with a nitroglycerin application at the end of the uh, surgery to enhance the blood flow, followed by daily, night, uh, daily hyperbaric oxygen for 90 minutes for 10 days, followed by beta methasone cream at six to eight weeks to reduce the keloid formation. And this was done in 63 patients. This started as a prospective uh, study patients who had three to six operations. The rationale for this approach is that hyperbaric oxygen is a well-established treatment, promotes angiogenesis, wound healing, it reverses the tissue hypoxia, reduces the inflammation, and it stimulates the uh, release of uh, stem cells. As for the nitroglycerin, the first use of nitroglycerin in humans was by Steve Scheuer and myself in 1986, where we, using a fluoresceometer, showed that there is increased fluorescence of the skin. Uh, we injected fluorescein in children uh, before circumcision, and we showed high fluorescein activities uh, in the specimens, the foreskin, uh, after the circumcision. And then we did a uh, study in the hypospadias uh, children, and we showed that it has some uh, benefits in the hypospadias. 30 years later, the plastic surgeons picked up our work, and in a very elegant studies, they did a prospective study in the post-mastectomy flaps, which are known to, ne uh, to necrose in about 30%, and the target sample was 400 cases, but the trial was stopped at 165 patients, because of the superiority of the nitrobid-treated flaps, where the nitrobid-treated flaps uh, reduce the morbidity or the necrosis of the flaps from 33 to 15%. So here is an example of a hypospadias who had multiple surgeries, and in the middle, a back operation a la Pat uh, McKenna and in the middle, there is a nitrobid ointment, and on your right-hand side, there is the uh, result after nine sessions of hyperbaric oxygen. And here is a pre-op. You can see the de dehiscence after erythroplasty and a post after tip operation. On your right, there is a nice result after a grafted uh, tip and 10 sessions of hyperbaric oxygen. Here is a uh, patient who had five operations, and I had to remove all the graft, all the scarred skin, which required a free graft, and I had to graft all the uh, penile skin. And as you can see on your right-hand side, the grafted uh, penis. And on your right-hand side, you can see a beautiful healing of the uh, skin. You can't tell me that this is due to a surgical skill. This is more of a hyperbaric oxygen uh, result. This one gave me acute heartburn. You can see on, uh, the, uh, on your right-hand side a straightforward urethroplasty. In the recovery room, this is what I saw, and I almost called my malpractice insurance carrier. So here is a, uh, uh, the result of the hyperbaric oxygen. So we had two groups, uh, one who followed the protocol 
and on the right, there are 32 patients who did not follow the protocol simply because their insurance would not allow the uh, hyperbaric oxygen or the patients live too far from the uh, hyperbaric facilities. And you can see that the morbidity in the uh, protocol group is 10% and the non-protocol is 34%. And so if we could wrap in yep, conclusion, perfect. we believe that the results of the hyperbaric oxygen is uh, to enhance the tissues and the vascularity and the blood flow to promote healing. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hanna.